Hey, what's up? It's Austin here from Make Pop Music, and I've been hearing a ton of songs lately use acoustic guitar, and it's something that we've never really talked about on this channel. We've used acoustics in videos, but I've never actually shown you how to mic an acoustic guitar, some of the different techniques and methods that you can use, and what those different techniques and methods actually sound like in action. So in this video, we're gonna look at a bunch of different mic techniques. We're gonna look at XY, we're gonna look at space pair, we're gonna look at using a guitar DI, we're gonna look at mid side, blum line, solo mics, etc. So by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how you wanna record your acoustic guitar and you'll have the tools to actually do that. So we're gonna dive in and do all of that in one second. But before we do, if you like this video, make sure that you subscribe because we have videos like this every single Friday. And if you wanna support us, you can head over to our website, Make Pop Music after this video ends and check out all of the really, really cool stuff we have over there. Sample packs, preset packs, MIDI packs, courses. Go check it out. Other than that, Let's see how to actually work with acoustic guitar. So here we are in the session. The first thing that I wanna talk about before I talk about any of these actual miking techniques is just a kind of general concept of recording an acoustic guitar. So typically, one of the main things that's gonna determine tone is what kind of guitar are you using? What kind of microphone are you using? And then where is that guitar and guitar player in reference to the microphone? So let me grab my acoustic. So this is an acoustic guitar. Most of the sound that you're gonna hear kind of comes out of this big hole right here. It resonates through this uh, kind of body of a guitar and this is what they call the sound hole. So typically when you're miking an acoustic guitar, whether it's a stereo mic or a solo mic, no matter what, the closer you get to this actual hole right here, it's gonna get boomier, it's gonna get more resonant, it's gonna get a little bit deeper. So if you keep recording guitar and you feel like it's really thick and really muddy and really boomy, so instead of miking the guitar right here at the sound hole, maybe move that mic up about a foot and mic it closer to like the 12th fret or even where the guitar kind of meets the neck and the body. You can also kind of tilt the microphone at an axis. So instead of pointing straight at it, you could always, you know, mic above and point down or you could always mic from the side. Just anything that's a little bit off axis will create a little bit less of that kind of really initial resonant boominess. So keep in mind where your guitar player is in reference to the microphones. And then other than that, like any other microphone, proximity effect is gonna be huge. So the closer you get to a mic, the fuller it's gonna sound. The farther that you get away, it's gonna get a little bit thinner, it's gonna get a little bit roomier. So again, if you want a thinner recording, maybe mic it higher on the neck, maybe scoot back a couple feet. If you want something really, really intimate and really, really full, maybe mic it closer to the sound hole and get a little bit closer to the mic or the mic sources that you have. So. Keep that in mind for all of these techniques we're gonna talk about. The first technique is one that is probably the most common and it is called XY pair. So for this, you're gonna need a pair of really small diaphragm condensers like pencil condensers or pencil ribbon microphones. And essentially what you wanna do is you're gonna kind of make these perpendicular to each other. So you wanna make a 90 degree kind of angle right where the capsules overlay each other as close as possible without touching. Typically these are going to be in a cardioid pattern and essentially, you're gonna place them like that. They'll make a nice little X right where these two capsules meet. And then you can kind of position that as the source wherever you want the guitar. So if you want it, again, really boomy, you can have it really close to the guitar, really close to the sound hole. If you want that to be a little bit more um, roomy and a little bit thinner, maybe you're gonna move it back and you're gonna move it a little bit off axis. So those are going to be your two sources. You're going to mic those straight into your interface. And then this is what you're gonna have once you get into your DAW. So right here, this blue that we're looking at is gonna be the XY. So we have a mic that was on the right and a mic that was on the left. Since these mics are so close to each other, you're not gonna have a ton of stereo width. You can kind of keep in mind the principle of the further the mics are apart, the bigger and wider it's gonna sound, but you also start to introduce things like phase issues. So let's go ahead and let's listen to what this sounds like. I don't really have anything on this except a little bit of volume. But let's look at supervision to see how wide this is. So as you can hear and you can see, it's not super wide. If we were to do one mic straight up the middle, you'll see that it is perfectly mono. That's perfectly right. Once we have both of them, since it's such a close proximity source and the mic capsules are really close to each other, you get a little bit of stereo width, but not a ton. If you have something like an XY mic and you want to create a little bit more width, one thing that I always like to do, which might be a no-no to some people, is maybe I'll just take this right here, this track delay compensation, and I'll nudge it back five milliseconds, or I can nudge this back a few samples. And what that's gonna do is it creates a slight time difference, so it'll kind of kind of create its own different kind of phase interaction and you get a little bit more width. Let me show you what this looks like. 
So that's just by moving one of these over five milliseconds. If we go back to normal, you get something like this, which is your true XY pair. So if you want something that feels like you were sitting in front of an acoustic guitar with two ears, XY is probably going to be the closest that you get because it basically sounds like an acoustic is right in front of you without just being completely mono. So that is XY. It's a really, really common technique for a stereo guitar. Um, but let's go ahead and let's talk about spaced pair because this is going to give you a much wider sound. So if you want to get something where it like really encapsulates the listener, Space pair is going to be what you're looking for. Again, you can get two microphones. Since these don't have to sit on top of each other, you can kind of use whatever mics you want. It always helps if they're the same microphone, especially if they're a matched pair, just to kind of reduce phase issues. And then other than that, the kind of general rule of thumb is you want these mics to be a three to one ratio. So let's say you have these mics three feet apart from each other. You want to be about a foot behind that as a guitar player. So if these mics are three feet apart, you're going to sit about one foot behind them kind of put yourself right in the middle of the two mics, and then that should get rid of a lot of phase issues. This is one that if you don't measure it, and if you're not super specific, you can start to have phase issues just because, you know, phase essentially happens anytime the audio hits the source at the same time. So you want to make sure that these are slightly different to give you that width, but it doesn't sound like there's like a slap back delay. So here's what it sounds like. As you can see, we have one panned right and we have one panned left. No track delay compensation or anything like that. Let's pull up the panorama scope so you can see that, the phase scope right here. Here's what this one looks like. So as you can see, you don't really need to nudge anything back, but there will be a little bit of phase that naturally happens. It creates a super, super wide sound, but as we start to phase and get a little bit out of you know standard left and right, that might be what you want, it might not be what you want. If we go straight from X, Y into this, you'll hear how different they sound. So to me, this almost sounds like you're hearing a guitar through your left ear and right ear, like there's almost guitars sitting straight to the sides of you. So that's a really good technique if you know how to mic it, you know how to keep your proportions right and you don't run into phase issues. That one is really, really great for stereo width. Let's talk about the next technique, which is just using one mic on a guitar. So this is probably what I lean towards the most. And I'll use this because uh, typically this is where you get no phase issues and you can get a super wide sounding guitar. And I find that when you only use one mic, you have a lot more control over where the player is in reference to the microphone. So you can control things like proximity. You can control things like mic angle. You can control things like how loud or how soft that mic is. Um, and it it's gonna give you a solo source because it's only one microphone. So here's what it sounds like. I just use this uh, Loudon Audio LS208 straight pointed at like the 12th fret of the guitar about a foot back. So we have perfect mono. Now what you can do if you wanna get a stereo sound is you actually have to physically play the guitar part twice. So it's like recording dubs for vocals or if you want a wide electric guitar, you're going to record two different takes because essentially you create width when you pan something out and there are timing differences and pitch differences. So if you play something different on each side, it's going to sound super wide. If you play the same thing, just slightly different, it's going to sound wide. The downside of this one and what I consider to be the only negative is say you're doing something like a really intimate ballad or a really intimate folk song. Since there are two separate guitar takes happening, there are going to be differences left and right. So if you want it to sound like it was one solo performance, basically a one take all the way through, and you want a little bit of width, this is not for you. But if you want something that sounds super wide, you're okay with there being subtle differences on the left and right channels. I find this one to give you a super wide, super cohesive signal, and you have a lot of flexibility and control. So here's what this sounds like, double tracked. versus if we go to the spaced pair. I also find that with solo miking it, you can typically use a better quality microphone um, and just record it twice. You know, like I might use my Latin Audio Eden, which is $4,000. I don't have two of those sitting around. So maybe instead of, you know, using a couple different $100 mics, maybe I could use a $4,000 mic and just do it twice. So that's using one mic. Again, I think you have the most flexibility when it comes to kind of shaping your tone with things like proximity and mic placement. 
and you're not going to run into phase issues with a solo mic. Now, let's go ahead and let's talk about mid-side. This is where things start to get a little bit more complicated. Let me show you a quick example. So mid-side is where you're basically going to take two large diaphragm condensers. And what's really important is you have to kind of orient these uh, just specific, right? So let's say that this Latin 320 right here is going to be the mic that I have pointed straight at the guitar. So the camera lens right now is the sound hole of the guitar. That's going to be capturing the primary body of the guitar. But then what we're going to do is we're actually going to take another microphone and we're going to put that at a 90 degree angle on top of it, completely perpendicular. Now, what's important is that this top microphone is a figure eight pattern. So you're going to want to use a mic that has a figure eight pattern because it needs to be capturing sound on both sides of this capsule right here. So this mic is in cardioid. This mic is in figure eight. They are perpendicular to each other. And then you're going to record a stereo source of that guitar. So let me show you what that sounds like. Here is our mic that would be pointed straight at the guitar. This is our one that is in a cardioid pattern. For this example, I was using the Lewitt 1040, and then I have the Lauten Audio Eden that I had on top. Again, it was in figure eight with the capsules pointed sideways. This is what this one sounds like straight up the middle. Now you might be wondering, Okay, how are we gonna get that to sound wide? Let me remove this here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that microphone source that was the figure eight pattern and you're simply gonna duplicate it. So I'm gonna name one left and I'm gonna name one right. And then we're gonna pan these out. So I'll pan the left 100% left and the right 100% right. And when I play these, obviously there's no panning happening because they are completely in phase with each other because it's the same source. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and flip the phase of one of them. So I'm going to open up the right channel. I'm going to flip the phase 180 degrees. And it gives you this weird, really wonky sound that almost sounds wider than life. Like it doesn't sound real. But I'm going to drag these volumes all the way down. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring that slightly up while that mid guitar plays. And that's going to add a little bit of width. So let's play this. And if we look at the phase scope, you can kind of see what we are doing. So I'm going to go ahead and, and play that again where I drag these all the way down. And you'll see this go from a mono source to start widening. And that's a really cool technique to get a sound that sounds like you're in the middle of a room where there are guitars being played around you. So again, you're going to capture a mic in a cardioid pattern pointed straight at the sound source. You're going to have another one perpendicular to that in a figure eight pattern. And then you're going to take that figure eight microphone, duplicate it, pan each out and flip the phase of one side and then just balance those side guitars to the mid. That's why it's called mid side. So that one's really cool. I find that one pretty natural sounding. I like that one a lot. The next one that we're going to talk about is very similar. It's called Blumline. And essentially, it's the exact same thing, except both microphones are in a figure eight pattern. So the bottom mic that is pointed straight at the sound source is also in a figure eight pattern now, which means that it's going to kind of capture what's going on in the room. So this kind of gives you the same effect. However, it kind of takes away a little bit of that directness that you get from a cardioid pattern. And it really makes you feel like you're in this almost like Binaural 3D space. We're not going to duplicate that, uh, what, what, what I'm going to call the center channel. Even though it's in figure eight pattern, it does not need to be duplicated. For the top one that's perpendicular, we do that same trick where we basically just duplicate the top layer. So I have one panned left, I have one panned right. I have this face flipped 180 degrees. And then again, you're just going to bring them up and you're going to balance them just like the mid side. And you can hear how much thinner and how much kind of roomier it sounds. And that's really in part to that, uh, you know, bottom mic that's pointed straight at the source still being a figure eight pattern where now it's kind of capturing a 360 degree uh, view of the room. So let's look at the phase scope just so you can kind of see what's going on. We're going to bring these down and automate them up as it plays.
What I can do is let's go ahead and let's show you what these sound like. So I'm going to play mid side straight into Blum line so you can kind of see, even though they're mic'd up similarly, what a difference that kind of second figure eight pattern makes. Now let's talk about the last method, and this is the one that I use the least. This is just doing a guitar DI input straight into an interface, just like you would with an electric guitar. So some acoustics are acoustic electric, so this one you can plug a quarter inch instrument cable right into the bottom there, because it has a pickup on the inside that will then translate to basically like an electric guitar signal. I tend to not love the tone that happens with this. When I'm tracking acoustic, the tone to me is super important, and when you use DI, I find that you don't get a lot of that tone. Even with me dialing the treble all the way back on this Taylor 214 CE, this is what it sounds like. As you can tell, it's just thin, it's scratchy, you don't get any of that warmth or any of that resonance that you get from an acoustic guitar. Like if we were to compare that to, you know, let's just say this mic that's pointed straight at the center versus this. It's just not really what I'm looking for in an acoustic guitar. What I will say is if I have like a really dense like pop arrangement or rock arrangement and I need a super bright acoustic guitar to basically just give me that kind of acoustic jangle, um, DI might be a great option for that. You don't have to fuss with mics. You don't have to fuss with mic placement. Simply plug it in and let it rip. You can also do something similar to what we did with the solo tracking where you just track it twice and pan it out. I don't love the tone of this, but I'll let you hear it. But now that I've shown you all of those, let me show you what these sound like in action. So you're going to hear some open strumming, and then we're going to go to some closed strumming. Everything is color labeled, and I will have Miranda make a little marker in post. But let's go ahead and let's listen. I'll pull up the phase scope so you can kind of see as we continue through. And uh, yeah, this is what all the different mic techniques for acoustic guitar sounds like. <laughs> And there you have it. That is, I believe, six different ways to mic up or get an input for your acoustic guitar. Let me know which technique is your favorite. I think that if I'm going for a wide stereo sound, I'm probably either going to do spaced pair or I'm probably just going to solo mic it and track it twice. If I want to go for something that feels really wide and really encapsulating 
and I want it to only be a solo take, I'm probably choosing midside or a blum line. I don't typically do XY a lot, and I don't ever really do DI, but that's just my opinion. Let me know what you thought down below in the comments. Let me know what your favorite is, and let us know what videos you want to see in the near future below. Other than that, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you see videos like this every single Friday, and head over to our website, makepopmusic.com, because that's the best way to support us on this channel. I'll see you guys next week with more content. Much love. Peace.